Okay. Hi, this is TH for Solar Cities, and we're about to have a nice meal on a Thursday evening at the end of the summer with our friend Jan, who helped us build our biogas system. This is the first time he's been over to use the biogas system in a domestic situation, and as we're preparing dinner, we have some vegetable remains, some rotten grapes, and usually in a kitchen you'll just throw these things away, but with a biogas system, you don't have any kitchen garbage anymore. Let me show you. We have here in the kitchen a place to put our, our plastic, a place to put our glass and metal, a place to put our paper towels and tea bags, that goes into the compost, and then a place to put our kitchen waste. And that vegetable waste is going to come out here to the biogas system. We start with the incinerator. One second, let me turn it on. And turn on some water. And we pour this in here. And then grind it up. Come over and see over here what happens. Sinkerator off. Now we take our ground up food waste, bring it over here to the biogas system. All that goes inside, and you can see that after a few days, this 300 liter barrel is full of gas. Now, because this barrel is too large for this, and about 100 liters worth sticks up, this area is dead space. So I filled the inside up to here with styrofoam. When you built it, actually, it was an empty space, but we couldn't get the gas out of here. So I've now filled this entire area up with styrofoam with a tube going down so that this dead space is filled. That leaves us with 200 liters of gas that we can have each time that we fill this tank. The extra... Uh, fluid that comes out when you pour the food waste in comes out here and this becomes really good liquid fertilizer and that liquid fertilizer can then be used to water your plants and it's a really good rich fertilizer and now on to the gas so the gas is very simple when I just open this up the gas will flow down here I take a brick for pressure up here. I can actually use two bricks. And actually, let me start without the bricks, and then we'll bring the bricks in afterward because this thing is so full that it's making the, uh, the water leak out. And now that this is open, let's go into the kitchen, and we're going to time how long this gas lasts. Do we have, we can pause now, we'll, we'll, we'll change it and go to the Let's hit pause. Open this up. First the carbon dioxide has to go out. You can you see a little bit of flame. Change? Not yet, wait till the carbon dioxide goes. If, if you didn't then take this to your church, yeah, just bring this to your church, I'm going to just take them started. So at the beginning, you have carbon dioxide gas that's filling the, uh, or air that's filling the pipe. But now we've gotten that out, and so we've got our gas. And we're just going to time how many uh, minutes of gas we get from that 200 liters tank that we have on the porch. And then we'll check back. We can go back out on the porch and we can see as it's heating up. What's going to happen now is as we use the gas, this of course is going to go down. And we're going to build a structure to hold this in place so we can put bricks on this to create a higher gas pressure. Right now we don't have them, so I'm just keeping the bricks here and letting the natural weight of this bring it down. 
it doesn't need a weight technically because as the gas begins to go out it creates its own negative pressure and this has some weight so it will go down but you don't get as strong a flame so it is good to put some bricks or put a metal weight on top of here it's just that right now as you can see this thing is tipping a lot and so until we've built a structure a kind of cage to hold it we'll just leave it free spinning but it's a very simple system people have asked is it dangerous the worst thing that could happen if there was a flashback if the flame could travel all the way back here and get inside where the gas is and if there was oxygen inside for it to combust with then you would have an explosion but what would happen is the explosion would blow the water out as you can see this is just a tank a plastic tank floating in water that's been filled with food and uh, has the bacteria in it so all it would do is just blow water out and you'd have a very messy porch uh, wouldn't be a dangerous explosion uh, if it didn't blow the water out then this would just pop up like a cork it wouldn't shoot up like a rocket it would just pop up like a cork so it's a very safe system it's not under any pressure at all and there's a lot of places for pressure to be released from all the way around where it's open on the sides and from here as well. What is this here? This is a solar hot water system that we built out of an old radiator and it has a thermostat and it has a 12 volt pump connected to a battery and the battery is connected to a solar panel over there, a photovoltaic panel, that charges the battery so that this battery is always charged and when this gets to 37 degrees which is body temperature, the temperature of the bacteria light then it turns on that pump and it circulates hot water into copper coils that we put in and back and then when it drops below 30 degrees the pump shuts off so this is just a circulation system where hot water goes into copper coils at the bottom of this tank transfers some of the heat to the water and then goes back in and that's because the bacteria like to be 37 degrees and here in Germany this summer we've had days as low as 11, 12, 13 degrees we've had weeks that averaged 18 degrees Celsius and we're not getting much over 25 degrees this entire summer so just to keep these bacteria happy we're putting this water in uh, hot water we're not getting really rapid production on hot days we can get about 20 minutes of gas and yet it took a whole week to fill this up. We think we'll get 30, 40 minutes of gas, but it took a week because it's been so cold and rainy. And that's uh, one of the limitations. So we're going to be trying some extremophils, some cryophilic bacteria from the Arctic that we're going to put in here that perform at these low temperatures. Right now we're using horse manure as our starter, and that has bacteria in it that like 37 degrees, same as the ones in our gut. The problem with Germany and these bacteria, it's going to get very cold in the winter. So that's why we've insulated the tank and we will use warm water when we pour it in and hope the insulation will keep this thing from freezing. And that's about it for the system. As I said, very, very simple. Over here, 